Hey, you're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. Let's start with a prayer. No, it's not, don't on. touch Hands me. Hands in. Hands in. Start with a prayer. Hands off. Let's go to a little thanks to Jesus. Go to a little thanks to Jesus. Put your hands in. We're going to no, start with a prayer. I don't want to touch your goddamn hands. Finish Whoa. the intro. First of all. Finish the intro. Finish the intro to the podcast. This is a bilingual American history podcast. Each week I read a story in uh, traditional Hebrew and <laughs> <laughs> English. <laughs> From American, uh, from American history. What a train wreck. Uh, Every week. Just the My name's Dave Anthony. I read it to my friend. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Is that true? Yeah. Want to start with a prayer? No. And called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> my name's Gary. <laughs> Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. This is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> my room's playing. Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep till hippo. No sleep till hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely <laughs> done, my friend. No. <laughs> no. Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. All right. Uh, Great. Oh, that was like a real show. You got any dates coming up? Yeah, um, I'm dating uh, your mom this Friday. What? I'm dating your sister on oh, Saturday. Let's start the music again. Oh, Sorry. no. <laughs> Is that what happens? Is that a penance? Uh, are we off the music? We're off the music Okay, uh, February 20th and 21st. This is a little confusing, but this is for Illinois. I'll be at Rosemont Zanies uh, in Illinois. And then the 22nd and the 23rd, I'll be in the Chicago Zanies. And then March 1st oh. and March 2nd, which is a Friday and Saturday, I'll be at Zanies Nashville. So that's a Zanies extravaganza, we're calling Don't. it. It's a Zanies extravaganzins. And uh, I'll be doing that. Don't. Uh, uh, February yeah. 8th, we will be in Philadelphia. Uh, February 9th, we'll be in Atlanta. Uh, the 16th of March, we'll be in Durham, uh, North Carolina. Uh, people are saying uh, they don't want to do Ticketmaster for that one. Uh, you can call the theater directly and avoid Ticketmaster yeah. gouging. Hey, you know he's coming to the Durham show. Who? Chad, the dude who... Oh, uh, fuck yeah, the UPS for, guy? Yeah, UPS. Great, love it. Uh, Brooklyn on uh, the 18th of May. Uh, Columbus. That date's got to be wrong. Th- this is how they're supposed March to March 30th? Right. March 30th? Does that seem right? I don't know. Man. Uh, You're asking the wrong guy, man. We, we will be right back. Wait, where? Yeah, Dollop Columbus. Yeah, March 30th. That's what I have. That's what you, is that in your email or is that on no, the website? Cal- no, no. Oh, no, it's not on a website. Oh, it's in your calendar? Okay, yeah. so it's probably yeah. right. So yeah. March 30th. I'd say most likely. Um, so we'll be in Columbus on March 30th. That, you know, so... Uh, basically, we uh, there are some of these are Ticketmaster. We're gonna we're gonna try and do less of that. Um, some of these were kind of shotgunned out fast, and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna put more thought into them. From yeah. now on. <laughs> so we apologize for the Ticketmaster bullshit. Uh, the new year means new resolutions, Gareth. Seamless. And we've got one you're working on twice every day. It's your mouth. It's your mouth hole. Maybe three times a day. There is no way that they have asked for you to they use said, the term mouth hole. They did. They Absolutely said mouth hole. No I'm way. talking about Quip, the electric toothbrush. The thing you put in your mouth hole to scrub your hard ones. We're start reading off of the <laughs> iPad. <laughs> um, so I use a Quip. Uh, you use a Quip. We both enjoy our Quips. Yeah. My whole family uses a Quip now. Yeah. We're a Quip family. Yeah. Uh, it's great. I uh, like Quip. It's got sensitive sonic vibration for an effective clean that's gentle on your sensitive gums because some people brush too hard. Yeah, I did. Uh, you did? Yes. And some electric toothbrushes are too abrasive, but not the Quip. Yes. That's right. Uh, built in two minute uh, Plus, timer. if you use it right, you are very good with off the cuff one liners at a party. Hey, guys, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> it has a built-in two-minute uh, timer pulses every 30 seconds to remind you when to switch sides. Uh, that's great. Uh, multi-use cover works as a stand, mount to mirrors, slide over your bristles to pack and protect your quip on the go. Yep. I bring it on trips now. I slap it to the mirror on the hotel. That's so why you always call them quip trips. Quip trip. We'll be right back. Slap it to the mirror in the hotel. Uh, it's pretty great. That's my favorite thing. Uh, brush heads are automatically delivered. You can get, get an automatic br- brush setup. So every three months, a new brush comes. You pop it on. Boom. Yep. You're good to go. Yep. Uh, it's delightful. Uh, Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association. 
You know, actually, Quip was a lot like uh, Dylan because they used to just make regular toothbrushes and then they went electric. Bob, I'm going to stop talking during the commercials. You're great. Uh, uh, so that's why we love Quip uh, and why over a million happy, healthy mouths do too. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to get Quip dot com slash dollop right now you can get your first refill pack for free that's your first refill pack free at g-e-t-q-u-i-p dot com slash dollop we are also brought to you by zip recruiter what gear core what? one word move on gear core what do you Only mean move on zip that's all you need to say gear core zip recruiter big buzz names okay uh so uh zip recruiter uh <laughs> But you threw me off. It, Dude, it's not you. I mean, it's how much I threw you off. I almost spit everywhere. Uh, so uh, ZipRecruiter, obviously, is an online hiring uh, site. Uh, job boards, uh, you can send uh, your candidates that... Uh, what the fuck? Oh, I see. Sorry. I can't. This is a bad copy. Um, so the, the job boards, right? Uh, you, what do you use for GearCore? What's your What was your we standard use Zip thing Recruiter. before? We, what would you use before a ZipRecruiter? Well, before ZipRecruiter, what we would do is we would set up a box, sort of like uh, how a child would set up a lemonade stand, yep. and we would bark at uh, popular intersections. Right. So how many how many people did you get coming in on that? I hired over five dogs. Okay. Six. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. You, I didn't realize you were hiring dogs. I wasn't trying to. I was trying to hire people, but uh, they just kind of collected around. So here's what you should have done. You should have gone to ZipRecruiter.com. Okay. Uh, slash dollop to hire the right person. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter finds qualified candidates for you. Its powerful matching technology scans thousands of resumes to identify people with the right skills, education, and experience. Okay. Picking up cats, uh, shaving a heavy cat, uh, figuring out which one's a cat and a seal, just the standard stuff at, at the job site. And actively invites them you to the You think those are things job. that are happening at Garacor? Because yeah. you're out of your mind. I by do. The way. That's exactly okay. what's happening. All right. Keep thinking that and having fun with that. And Meanwhile, we're. Never mind. Revolutionary, revolutionizing the bottling and the kite business. Okay. Meanwhile, that's not a thing. There's no kite business anymore. Exactly. <laughs> that's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. This rating comes from hiring sites on Trustpilot with over a thousand reviews. Uh, and right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address: ZipRecruiter.com/dollop. If you love the show, you show your support to it and the ZipRecruiter by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash D-O-L-L-O-P. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash dollop. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Uh, we should point out that uh, we are doing this episode in Burbank. Protest? At the, oh. No, in the, <laughs> uh, in the All Things Comedy uh, studio. So if you want to watch us do this, you can go to the All Things Comedy YouTube page. Um, and by, if I may, it is dynamic to watch. I mean, who wouldn't? What about this isn't? Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Dave. I'm doing my video face. Yeah, it's terrible. It's a nightmare. 1625. Year of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we just start with one prayer? No. Can we just start with one no. prayer? No. A handful of Dutch West India Company settlers had spent the winter on Governor's Island to set up a fur trading post. Okay. In the early summer, they started moving to Manhattan along with a hundred newcomers who had just arrived from Amsterdam. Okay. By the middle of September, they had moved their cows and horses on to Manhattan. Okay. Okay. Sure. That's a different vibe now. It's going to be hard to get a, I mean... You ever, you ever taken a, a cow across on a canoe or something like that? Yeah. No, never done that. You surprised with my answer? No. Yeah. 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 I you am. are. Yeah. Actually, no, I've never canoed a cow. I've never cow nude. Oh, cow nude. Never mind. Come on, let's go. People start turning this off. Oh, I was, uh, <laughs> I was doing video stuff. Yeah. So now they had to build enough housing to survive the winter. Okay. Right? Uh, they did, and a year later, they had around 30 houses. Okay. it's a lot. Quote, made of the bark of trees. Sure, 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 sure. Weird. To, <laughs> sure. I mean, are we just pointing out how thin the homes are? It's not a great. I mean, generally, 
I feel like that would fail a, 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 like a, a inspection. Inspection. Yeah, like the guy'd be like, oh, guy. no, he's gonna come right down. So you made this uh, out of bark. Yeah, but this is load bearing bark, sir. So you need this yeah. bark here, so otherwise the bark roof will come down, and you know we could all get a sore arm. Okay, so the thing is, there's actually no such thing as load bearing bark. It's well, on the outside of the tell tree. That. Well, let me take you to the man cave because I think you'll see there. It's all load bearing bark. Look at this, huh? You believe that? Yeah, I believe it. It's not. This is not. I'm good. looking here, huh? Did you think about using wood? Well, no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is all built on the west side of Manhattan. Three years later, in August 1628, the settlers were, quote, beginning to build sturdy new houses to replace the hovels and huts. Okay, so they've moved beyond bark. Yeah, so now they're like, let's actually build some place instead of a hut. A bark hut. Bark huts. Right. Bark hut's not great. No. Uh, legend had it that the Dutch started their move to Manhattan on the 1st of May. Legend. Legend. I mean, even if it's not true, I'm not going to be that impressed. Okay. Yeah. And that on each May Day anniversary after, uh, they would repeat it by leaving their houses and moving to a new one. Okay. Uh huh. So it's oh, like, right. a, like a little musical chairs, but for a house sure. on a certain day. Yeah. What sort of like an elaborate clock would do every hour. That's right. Right. Uh, a Dutch encyclopedia from 1696 says the first day of May was called Verhusdag or moving day. Sure. Where you would just literally leave your house. You move on that day. So just every May, every May, May 1st, 1st, vacate new, house. new spot. New okay. house. Got to get right. a new house. All right. It was standard to have uh, leases, whether commercial or residential, expire <laughs> on May 1st. So you're this just is signing now we've one year. Ahead. You're now just signing jumped one year. I've jumped ahead. Oh, okay. Um, uh, this, so uh, it, that's the day people moved on May 1st. Uh, some locations in England, May 1st was known as Pack Rag Day. Sure. Doesn't surprise me coming from <laughs> my homeland. Well, you, that's the day. I swear to God, yeah, if you told my go. mother Pack Rag Day, there, yep. I mean, she still has an, an a tremendous amount of rags. Yeah, D- time to pack the yeah. rags. Ooh, this is a good rag. Oh. Something my mother said. Ooh, put the rag there. Ooh, that's a nice rag. Things I've literally heard from her. So, it was called that because that was the day when servants would put their possessions in a bundle and switch employers at hiring fairs. Switch. Okay, so you're so May is kind of like you. you First just, of May, you just change everything. You're starting over. You're just a no new home, new new career. Yep. New Mo- spouse. M- sure, why not? Hey, I like it. Moving day in uh, New York went on like this uh, for over a hundred years. So starting at 1625, it just keeps fucking going. Everyone did did on the same day. Everybody's moving every May first. Yeah. <laughs> In 1809, Washington Irvin, Irving wrote, quote, the you memorable- must love doing this to I mean, I know <laughs> nothing. Well, I mean, just the fact that you're already like, wait a minute, what is happening? But that's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. The fact that every May 1st, you're like, man, I love this spot, but hey, you know what I mean? It's April 30th. But they were like, everyone started doing it in 1625, yeah. so let's just keep it going. Yeah. Okay. Uh... Uh, so Washington Irving wrote, quote, the memorable emigration of the great settlers to New Amsterdam took place on the 1st of May and was long cited in tradition as the grand moving. The anniversary, the anniversary of it was piously observed among their sons by turning their houses topsy turvy and carrying all their furniture into the streets. This what I mean, you so when, when it May 2nd must have been a great day when you're like, oh, thank oh, God, Jesus. it's not furniture street day. Every single person like, let's go. So that's 1809. So we're almost 200 years in and there's still May moving. There's still May moving on May 1st. Okay. And it was further solidified when in 1820, the New York State Legislature passed a law that made all leases end on the 1st of May. Dude, I, I'm not I'm not going to belabor <laughs> my amazement at this, but I mean, you must just be. I mean, it's like the purge of apartments. It's mayhem. It's chaos. It is a little. It is a little purgy. Yeah. I just realized my ringer's on because I had. Oh, that's all right. I man. still care about you. It's not. It's got nothing to do with that. What's but, happening? Well, Aaron. What's happening? What's happening is, is that you wouldn't pray with me, and now. Yeah, I don't pray. Um. Okay. I think my prayers. Uh. So, so, so they passed this law. At least it's not on the May first. May first. Though the number of people within who were within leases at that time was small minority. So 
you don't have the Manhattan we see today of tons of buildings and apartments. It's a lot of just houses at sure. that point. And then there's some leases, you know, but sure. it's not a huge deal. Right. Tenants would find out if their rent was going to increase on February 1st. Dude, this and just then sucks. that gave them three months to find a new place or to decide to stay with the new rent increase. Okay. So most people decide to stay in their old place until the very last minute for whatever reason. Okay. A city ordinance. So basically our like climate change policy. Yeah. It's the same thing. Right. Okay. Uh, A city ordinance stated tenants not renewing their lease had to leave their building by nine o'clock a.m. and be in their new place. by SAT question. (laughs) Be in their new place by 3 p.m. Okay. But a lot of people had no idea where they were. This is May 1st and people don't know where they're going. Well, at that point, if you know you're leaving, you should have a place lined up. If you can line one up, I mean, maybe you can't, but you have you have to find a place by 3 p.m. because you have six hours to move all your shit. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's normal. It's not normal. It's stressful. I'm stressed. A writer quote year after year on a the first. I know I didn't know who okay. it was. A writer quote year after year on the first of May, the Universal Moving Day. Homeless people gathered in the park with their goods and chattels, and were lodged in the jail until the houses they had rented could be got ready for them so people who so now these are people who are breaking law so these are people who whose place is not ready yet right so uh so they just go to the jail <laughs> what you got oh, okay so god damn what so if you didn't have your crazy May Day move lined up you went to jail yeah you had to have it ready you have to be in your place by 3 p.m if not you just go to the park or, and then you're and you're in, homeless in jail. And, then, and then you get put in jail okay so it this tell- is when there was enough like prisons for the homeless people. I guess so. Yeah, right. There was also a major change because with empty buildings, landlords could get busy. Uh, the mayor wrote about it on moving day, 1826. Quote, the pulling down of houses and stores in the lower parts is awful. Bricks, rafters, and slates are showered down in every direction. It looks like the ruin <laughs> from an earthquake. Further up at the corner of Chamber Street, a row of low buildings has been removed to make way for one of those mighty structures called a hotel. Eating, drinking, and lodging above with merry shops below. So these 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 guys are not... You own a building. Yeah. You're taking advantage of it. You want to build a bigger building. Sure. So you take advantage of May 1st. And when everyone vacates you just fucking tear that shit down and start so on may 1st is also a day is the day when you can decide to to rebuild page one rewrite your place and so you implode it so on may 1st yeah everybody's moving furniture some people who don't have homes are being jailed because they're now technically homeless they should be they're illegal and building owners are just deciding now that they can just explode their buildings tear it down start a new one build the hotel now now you can build the hotel that the fucking ferguson's are gone this is normal. So buildings start getting bigger, more people moving into those buildings. The next year, there was a yellow fever epidemic. Okay. And this would have been a great time for us to pray. I'm uh, not, no. Banks and stores were forced to move to makeshift structures on Bank Street. That makes a sense. paper wrote, quote, Greenwich is no longer a country village. Such has been the growth of our city that the building of one block will... Sorry, of the building of one block more will connect the two places. And in three years' time, Greenwich will be known only as a part of the city and the suburbs will be beyond them. So basically, Greenwich is blowing up. Okay. Becoming Thank a big you. place. Now in lots that just had a house, there were tenements. So, right? There had been a house before. Now there's very quickly this is happening. The city's exploding. Now there's tenements with 80 to 150 people living in them. Okay. Most were built quickly to house immigrants who were arriving from Europe with not a lot of money and no job. Okay. Uh, they had three rooms, a front room, two bedrooms. Plumbing was almost non-existent, except each tenant would have a backyard outhouse or a pump. I think it's safe to say your initial statement's still true. <laughs> I just, just, just so a we know where outhouse. I'm at. Just so we know where I'm at. Yeah, let's check I, in with you. Let's check in with me. I would rather die <laughs> than share a bathroom with 80 people. <laughs> But not a bathroom, Dave. Not a bathroom. Yeah, it's a shit a shithole. It's not a, shit, a bathroom. It's, a, it's an outhouse. Yeah. 
I mean, I, really, the only thing that is separating it from just regular land is yeah. four walls and a hole. Yeah, yeah. No, so so I'd rather be dead. Right. Okay. Like right there, I'm not going back in time. Just kill me. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want any part of what's happening. Don't you think? The line. So what? You can't go to a concert for a weekend? I'm not going to shit at a concert. <laughs> What are you going to do? I'm going to fucking shit before I go or hold that in. I'm not going to fucking shit at a fucking. So, but you'd never go to like Coachella and like just be in the elements for like. Yeah, no. I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah. I'm okay. too. There were times when I did, but I'm not going to go. I wouldn't to... either, but I just love to picture you there just, you know, with your legs crossed like. <laughs> legs crossed. <laughs> I mean, I like the Foo Fighters, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh. Right. We'll get back to those. We'll times, get back though. to those times. Yeah. yeah. The neighborhoods reach densities of half a million people per square mile. A resident quote to live a family of eight in three rooms seemed quite normal as was being without a bathroom and sharing the toilet with three neighbors. So that's right there. That's 24 people to, uh, to, a oh toilet. no, that's more. That's, uh, Right, eight times. I think yeah, that's it's thirty-two. That's the thirty. So he's talking about four. Oh, four. four. Families, okay, three yeah. neighbors, four families. Sure. Thirty-four <sighs> humans to a thirty-two humans to a toilet. Those are I, LAX numbers. I, <laughs> <laughs> to me, this is the toilet apocalypse. Like this is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the apocalypse. They knew it sucked, and that they had it worse off than others. So they knew that they were living in a shitty situation because they other people right. had houses and stuff. Right. Uh, they, quote, knew that by American standards, they were victims of an outrage. An outhouse rage. An outhouse rage. But they also remembered that in the old country, many of them had lived in hovels. So they submitted as best they could to their daily burdens, determined to escape as quickly as possible. Okay. Working class people could not afford to ride in horse carriages uh, or later the streetcars that came. So most New Yorkers tried to live close to where they worked. Okay, that makes sense. The Lower East Side was working class and immigrants. The West Side was where merchants and professionals lived. Okay. Pros. Right. The peeps. The, for the pros. Right. Uh, prescription, uh, sorry, a description of Lower Manhattan, Irish neighborhood. Quote, a dozen gruesome doorways gave, I'm going to say, first of all, let me just say, this person is not a huge fan of the Irish. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, I think your uh, first half sentence sort of shows that. <laughs> gruesome. What do you call like a doorway gruesome? It's gruesome. You're digging. A dozen gruesome doorways gave up loads of babies to the street and the gutter. <laughs> so the doorway is just like baby shitting onto the street? Babies rolling out into the gutter. Oh, the fucking meh, Irish. Meh, like a wave of just like, meh. I'm tidy, I'm tidy, I'm fresh from the womb. Garments fluttered from fire escapes. What? Okay, all right. In all unhandy places, there were buckets, brooms, rags, and bottles. In the street, I mean, those kind of are the essentials. That's yeah. the Irish no, to that's go kid. Normal. In the street, infants played or fought with other infants. That's playing. Or sat stupidly in the way of vehicles. Boy, this person is just <laughs> sat stupid. They're chi They're children. It's a, the baby is just dumb. Look at these stupid Irish babies sitting want, in the street. You want to go watch the infants fight? Hey, what am I doing? I'm tiny. Formidable women with uncombed hair and disordered dress gossiped while leaning on railings or screamed in frantic quarrels. Withered, this sounds awesome. Yeah. Withered persons. What are you looking at me? Withered persons in curious postures of submission sat smoking pipes in obscene corners. This is me, by the way. The building quivered and creaked from the weight of humanity stamping about in its bowels. So that person doesn't is not a huge fan of the Sounds tenement. Sounds like a uh, set dresser for a musical. It's really that. not great. Yeah. yeah. So it's a packed tenement. It's a fucking full yeah, of Irish. It's not sure. great. No for one, sure. no one wants a giant building full of Irish. Probably not even the Irish. The Irish, like you're saying, <laughs> the Irish are ready to move on. Obviously, the person who wrote that did not have a big grasp of poverty. No, I would imagine. No. It wasn't uncommon for people to live uh, in a dozen a dozen houses in a dozen years. Okay, wow. So you would literally just move every fucking year. Good Lord. And those same people would talk about wanting to move again to try another neighborhood out. It's it's like, yeah. Though, it's really fucking weird. Yeah. Well, I think it just became the norm, right? Yeah, so it's I get been going that. on for a couple yeah. hundred years now. So 
I it, but I get it in a way, like the idea of going and checking out a different neighborhood. But it's also like having to. I mean, I guess we just have so much stuff now. Right? Maybe so it's they like moving is such a nightmare. But now. I would imagine they had a lot of shit. I just think that they. It's just what you did. Yeah. Well, and by the way, I mean, this is this sort of shit still happens. You know, it's like if you're in some uh, like drug torn country, they will like drug torn drug or, torn. or war torn, torn, drug torn, <laughs> you know, drug torn, drug infested, I, the like country, a place where there's warlords. Yeah, I came from a country drug- that was torn apart by uh, magic mushrooms. You wish. Uh, <laughs> and, but they will like they'll like bust up, you know, they bust up a building at like 3 p.m. And it's like, you got to go. Yeah, that's Everybody it. Move. Moving on. Yep. Uh, so, so though at this point it was actually very hard to, to rent for longer than a year. Okay. So it's both sides, like the people want to move, but also the landlords make it hard for you to stay. Right. Cause if the landlords get you out, they can raise the rent. Right. Either way they can raise the rent really. Yeah. 85% of New Yorkers live within two miles of Union Square. David Crockett visited and wrote, quote, we drove up to the city and took a view of the improvements and beautiful houses in the new part. By the time we returned down Broadway, it seemed to me that the city was flying before some awful calamity. I was told it was moving day. Every street was they crowded. They Davy Crockett to New York on moving day? He's like, what the fuck? Oh, boy. Every street was crowded with carts, wagons, and people. So, yeah, he just saw it and he fuck was like. you, Crockett. He was like, what the Lord. fuck is going on? Hey, come on. It's me. A resident, quote, in every direction there were carts and wagons laden with furniture the streets were literally filled with chairs, tables, drawers, desks, carpets, etc., passing from one house to another. That is so weird. The movers loved it. Yeah, the movers loved it. Uh, it's uh, the busy day. You know, it's the day we work. I mean, people like give a Halloween store shit. Imagine being a mover. You get one day. I do uh, one day. You know, I take uh, 364 off. One day a year. Uh, it's a crazy day, though. Oh, my God. Holy shit. My, uh, my dogs are barking. It's you know a I mean? busy day. It's a busy day. It's the busy time of the day. We call it working day. Yeah, it's working day. Uh, On moving day, Cartman, they're called Cartman because they had carts. Sure. They made double wages. So did the, quote, New York gossips. They would use moving day. At, they didn't make double. They didn't make double wages. They loved it. Also, gossips. Sorry. Oh, I gossips. Yeah. Okay, right. Um, I was like, they're paying gossips. No. Like, did you hear? They would use moving day to peep into the lodgings of strangers because as May Day got closer, landlords would post a rent notice, and then people would come and just go look at apartments. <laughs> so, not only are people coming through who actually want to live there, yeah, there's just like but people s- are coming through to just look yeah, to see gossipers. how you're yeah. professional gossipers. We've always been the same. We just haven't had a phone forever. Some were actually looking at the space. Others came to look at your shit and see how you lived. Quote. Yeah. It is almost impossible for a stranger who has occupied lodgings and wishes to escape in position to avoid such intrusion into his private rooms. We had we have suffered this ourselves and therefore speak from experience. Okay. So there's no law like now your landlord has to give you 24 hours, right? If he comes over right. or wants to show the place. But then they could just fucking show up and like, yeah, here he is. <laughs> <Here's> a- <laughs> He's smoking weed and eating cereal. <laughs> Hey, it's oh, hey. a nice space. Boy, he's yeah. really a pig, huh? Yeah. Don't say yeah when I'm talking to her, please, sir. Oh, sorry, yeah, shut man. up and just please. Have you had oh, uh, fruity nice pebbles? To... Okay. You can if you look on the table, and no pants. Look at that. I'll, uh, I got no pants. Look at that. On. That really opens up. So you got two of these closets. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Cause I want to. I shit in one because the uh, obviously the outhouse thing I can't do. Feces with. in this one, so that's obviously one down. Forty so people. The one, the one over there I like because it really opens up, but the other one it seems to be of. Uh, that's my shit using one. Using as a sort of area for refuse, I suppose. Shit. Um, but uh, I like everything I hear, and I got to find a place because obviously it's May first, and I don't oh, yeah. a lot of time. So you only can look at really one place. All right. Well, I think once you get the hose on this guy and uh, get all his stuff hose? out, then I'll. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely. I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested. All right. Well, get that closet cleaned. Guy's a nightmare. American-born women spend a lot of their free time going into the apartments of foreigners to see if they were respectable and had their rooms well furnished. Yeah. So why you not? You mean white women? Let, yeah, let's throw in some racism here. White so, women. Yeah. So native-born American white women are just cruising around looking at the filthy Irish and yeah. the filthy Germans and the filthy English and Italians sure. and judging yeah, and judging and right. being assholes. Right. 
Quote, Americans could not have invented any domestic custom more prying or which gives a greater access to the privacy of strangers. Right. This is cool. Yeah, totally cool. Yeah. Immigrants were shocked by moving day and thought it was stupid. Hmm. Interesting. I'm sorry. We do what here? Oh, you guys probably do something foolish where you're from. See, every May 1st, we all just leave and find a new place with all of our stuff. And if you don't, you go to jail. Welcome to the USA. Are you fucking idiots? I'm walking away now. <laughs> One Englishwoman said it looked like the population was abandoning abandoning the city due to a plague. Because <laughs> everyone's just fucking streaming yeah. out of the house yeah. with all their shit. Yeah. Although I don't know how much moving you do when you have the plague. Or when someone has the plague. You well, know. I think she's saying that. That not that people if they're scared of getting the plague. So yeah, they but all... either but even if you're scared of getting the plague, you're like, yeah, you gotta leave a couple things. We'll find a new bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, that's fair. when we get there. We'll do we'll do a shop. Yeah, we'll hit Pier One Imports. We'll they buy some of the stuff we missed over here. Thing. Again, it's airborne. Okay. Everyone, should we bring the rat? Absolutely, bring the rat. Yeah. Okay. You mean mighty? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone seemed to be annoyed by it, but it was unavoidable if you rented. It was the way it was. People actually started building houses just to avoid moving day. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. Right. then people probably still were coming in your place like, what's uh, the deal here? What are we doing? You guys are open or not? I own this. Uh, well, come mind if I r- rummage through your stuff to see yeah, how you yes, live? Yes, yes. This is my house, so you actually can't come into it. Can I use your toilet closet? Nope. nope. Can I use your toilet closet? We don't have a toilet closet. Can I go on your lap? Nope. Can I go on my lap? No, not here. All right. Happy May. No. Uh, hey, it's going to be May. <laughs> Don't do it in dance. All right. Okay. Thank you. Writer Lydia Maria Child called Moving Day the saddest thing she had ever seen. Children were on the street carrying what they could for their parents. The dogs looked bewildered and the cats sat on doorsteps meowing. Quote, so... They were, the animals were the exact same. The animals were also like, what the fuck? They must have just, I mean, they must go crazy. Oh my God. Imagine cats on moving day. I (laughs) cannot. It's like a cat apocalypse at that point. Quote, human being. Apocalypse. I had to, because you did one and I did a poop. You didn't have to do that. That's the thing. I'll wait for my third. Quote, human beings are such creatures of habit and imitation that what is necessity soon becomes fashion, and each one wishes to do what everyone else is doing. A lady in the neighborhood closed all her blinds and shutters on May Day. When asked by her friend whether she had been in the country, she answered, I was ashamed to not be moving on the 1st of May, so I shut up the house that the neighbors might not know it. She felt like a pariah for not moving? That's right. So it's so... Everyone is so into moving now. On the she first was of, depressed because she didn't. She wasn't leave. depressed. She was shamefully hiding because she didn't want people to see her not moving, like some and, kind of and fucking then, animal. And then what is your plan May second for everyone that's been to your place over the last year? I don't know. Well, Okay, so what, you just shut your blinds for one day and then you're like, do, 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 do. I guess it's just on that day, she, because it's like when you're, when you, when you're at a party. It will be inferred from the fact that you are staying in the same place that you didn't move May 1st. So the shame that you're hiding from May 1st, you're going to feel for the rest but of May. On the day of the event, it's like if you go to a toga party and you're wearing jeans and a shirt. On that day, you feel like an asshole. So it's just that day. No, it's not. It, it is. It, no, it isn't. You're an you don't know what it's like works moving in day. Rome. You don't know what moving day is like for us. What are you talking about? <laughs> Entire neighborhoods would be broken up. So everyone in the neighborhood is gone. And when it was over, people would not know where to look for their friends because everyone... Had frantically, frantically who, taken who, off who to their new is place. Sticking to this plan, who's still? Well, we gotta make new friends. You know what I mean? We'll just find new everything. We'll just find new friends every May. I mean, we make new friends. Like I assume you tell like your close friends. You're like, hey, Larry, uh, Bill, I'm moving. But then you forgot to tell Jeff and Gary, and then and everyone. Everyone is moving. It's not one person. Everyone's moving. And there's no phone. Oh, hey, Ted, I thought you were Bill. Where's Bill? Ah, shit. Maybe we'll see him again. Maybe not. Yeah. 
that's what that's one of the perils of moving day. Well, it's I mean, <laughs> it's hard to live, it, it. but it's but no, it's what we do. Yeah, it is not. The Brooklyn da- Daily Eagle in 18 18- Great publication. The best. <laughs> it's an eagle. It's a nightmare. It is an eagle. The Brooklyn Daily Eagle in 1847 said a large part of the year was spent restoring the order that had been disturbed by moving day. Sure. Sure. <laughs> You're really not ha- so, happy with the concept well, of moving. I, just, <laughs> I really think what m- this era needs uh-huh. is somebody to say, hey, everybody, let's just take a time out. Yeah. Now, every single May, we lose our shit as a town. Yeah. Let's stop doing that. You can stay in a no. place no. for a while. Okay, so counter argument. Yeah. It's what we do. <sighs> the landlords were very much down with moving day. It let them easily raise rents. So it's easier to raise rent on a new person than it is a person that stays there, sure, right? Right. Uh, and the Daily Eagle said they would resist getting rid of it. So landlords want it. People think it's fashionable. Uh-huh. Um, the paper called for the laws that led to moving day to be changed for the public good and convenience but the law was contrary to both. So that's eight, 1847. So we, we're now 225 years. years into moving day. <laughs> <laughs> People who own real estate use moving day to gauge the state of the market. If it was a day of total chaos, that meant the market was good. If it, it was a calm day, that meant the market was bad. It, it's, it, the market's good. <laughs> Every year the market's good. It's chaos. And now you have surveyors out there, too? I mean, they're pissed, but they're not livid pissed. I didn't see that many angry dogs this year running around, not knowing where they were. Yeah, I mean, like, Mm. predicting Groundhog Day seems as good. In 1854, the New York Times wrote about how great the market was for landlords. Quote, we chanced to be in downtown office the other day when the house agent, guy for the landlord, uh, made his call. The rooms were rented at 1,200 last year. That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah. 1200 <laughs> That's a lot of it's fucking money. New York 1854. Rent. New York rent. That's always been atrocious. Uh, 1200 1200 The rooms were rented at 1200 last year. This, he said, was very low. Oh, yeah. And this is New York. Quote, too low to secure a good tenant like yourself. Now we must have 1600 from the 1st of May. Such rewards for good tenants, we hear, are common this season. The rise in rent is from 20 to 33%. Wow. So they're just so it, jacking up right, fucking It's not rents. rent control. Though. There's no, yeah, yeah there's, there's no, no anything. I mean, there's no. This is, this is the free market, <laughs> no baby. Ca- right, yeah. Capitalism. This is the, the uh, libertarian dream right Yeah, here. right, yeah. Some people enjoyed the hell out of it. For them, moving day became a day of ritual celebration. They danced in the streets and lit bonfires, particularly in the poorer neighborhoods. All right, good. So just to add a little Mrs. Dash to the party, Mm -hmm. there's fires. Yes. Great. When writer uh, Seba Smith saw the bonfires, he thought the tenants were angry and rioting and going to burn the city down. Why, no, no, no. (laughs) They're celebrating. (laughs) Why wouldn't they be? It's a day of moving, sir. It's a day of moving. (laughs) But it turned out they were just burning their old straw beds, which had become a tradition. Dave, keep going, bud. <laughs> keep going. Keep telling me the story. On moving day, everyone now burned their straw bedding. Dave, I'll let you know when I see something crazy, I'll stop you. <laughs> Just a bunch of straw beds burning in the streets while everyone's moving. Boys would dance around the fire and poke it with sticks while chanting, Hoorah, hoorah, for we roast bed bugs and fleas. Hark, hear the fleas roar, and the bud bugs crack and snap like burning sticks. Okay, you need you need to go. It's just a good I t- normally would leave. I need you to leave. Have you ever now say you're having a romantic night with a lady? Have you ever just thrown some bed bugs on the fire or fleas and just heard them scream or pop? I'm gonna it's go, pretty uh, pretty great. Slip into something a little more comfortable. Yeah, and then come back in a velvet suit. Plus, I'm gonna throw these uh, bed bugs in the fire. <laughs> Listen to them die. Huh? That's Ah, uh, as they did this, so as the fires are burning, the cartmen had to steer around the mess and fires as they moved people's belongings to their new houses. Of course, that's right. So it's just, just a new, a yep, new thing to deal with. The fires, May Day, 
moving. That's right. At first, the movers were uh, farmers from Long Island who had wagons to rent. So back in the day, farmers would come in. But now it's all Cartman and it's a business. Sure. Yep. Um, in the beginning, uh, so the cart, sorry, the Cartman were licensed now. Oh, okay. People did not think much of the Cartman. Okay. Their lack of concern for clients was legendary. Okay. So that hasn't changed much. Uh, movers are still movers. <laughs> yeah. I feel like so, there's some good ones for sure. Yeah, there's good movers. You know what you do? Work with the movers. Oh. Move with the movers. Become one with uh -huh. the movers. You know, then you're on the team, and then you can watch what's going on. Sure. Not funny or interesting, no. but said. I'm Serge. You leave chair? Yeah. <laughs> no. You no. do not take chair, yeah? No, I take chair. Take no, chair. chair heavy. You leave chair? No, I'm taking the chair. Chair's not heavy. Okay. Boys, chair stay. No, no, no. People, uh, sorry, uh, something would always end up broken or uh, lost during the move. And Cartman were known to get into fist fights with each other and get arrested on moving day. Great. That's great when you're for your move, too. <laughs> when you're moving all of your things on a whim to go find a new well, some place. Some other guy pulls up with a cart. And then you're... your cart men get into a fight. Yeah, you got two carts head to head. You fucking get out. You're screaming each other. Next thing you're punching What's that guy. What's the worst that could happen? One of the bed bug straw fires hits your cart and all your things burn? Yeah. That's it. From uh, Isaac Lyons' oh, recollections of an old Cartman, quote, during the last two weeks of April of each year, the Cartmen begin to put on an attitude <laughs> and look and act with more importance than any other time. Uh, yeah, I, their value. Yeah, I guess. What's up, bro? Hey, I uh, don't want any BS. You're gonna need a, you need a mover? I need a Cartman to help me move. That's right, for May 1st. Yeah, that's cool. I could probably do that. Uh, Great. So a couple things I'm going to need from you. I'm gonna not gonna lie. Go it's ahead. Off to a rocky start. Go with ahead you. and call me Lord. Okay, that is uh, not. Uh, uh, let oh, me stop. So you're let making let a let mistake me. right now. Don't look me in the eyes. I am gonna absolutely look you in the eyes, and uh, I'm going to look you in the eyes and tell uh -huh. you I have a problem with your first rule and okay. your second rule. How are you gonna move your shit? I'm gonna go talk to another Cartman. Uh, Lord Johnson, because he's over there. You can talk to Lord Johnson if you want. Don't look him in the eyes. Uh, he doesn't like it. I'll go talk to. Nobody likes it. Uh, We're all lords. Okay. Um, I'll go talk to Lord Johnson then, I guess. Okay. Piece of shit. What's your problem? I'm a mover. Who gives a shit? Everybody then started calling the Cartman Mr. Cartman. He becomes very domineering, and everybody feels that it is in their interest, if not their duty, to bow and cringe to him. Oh, my God. For on uh, that day of all the year, it is generally admitted that a Cartman may charge any price that he pleases. This is so just, people, this is the purge. So pe <laughs> There's not a rule. There's not a rule to be found. <laughs> so people start being super nice to the Cartman because they don't want him to I'm charge it, so, suck your dick charge so much money yeah 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 it makes sense i mean well, it's how our government functions now the times started calling moving day the cartman's harvest that's a great band that is <laughs> I love the cartman's harvest the brooklyn daily eagle said cartman were one of the most necessary evils of moving day they but, could. but you don't need moving day. No, oh, that's not true. What would you do otherwise? Just stay. I don't understand. Oh, my gosh. They uh, could charge what they wanted, be as rude as they wanted, and smash, smash furniture without consequences. These guys are not okay. Their, their <laughs> attitude is not okay with them. People on moving day were at the Cartman's mercy. Everyone just knew price gouging was part of the deal on moving day. Many New Yorkers had to pay an entire week's wage to move. It's basically income tax. Yeah, it's a tax. I mean, because every day, every, you know, like, I mean, basically at one one day ish every year or around one time, we all are losing our minds trying to get it all together. It and then we do it and we recognize that we're getting fucked, but we just want to be over it and start the next chapter. Yeah, so this is a this is a version of a private industry tax. Yeah. Right. Um so <laughs> a useless industry. So the city made law made laws regulating what the Cartman could legally charge. Okay. Articles would then be published the night before in the papers. 
the night before moving day, so the public knew how much the Cartman could legally charge. Dave, I, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to poke holes. Go ahead. Why is it the night before? Why, why could this not have happened a week before so that you can have a little bit of a chance to get your head straight before you go into I think, nightmare day? I think because maybe, you know, it's, it's a big week. That's a big week. Leading there's, up, but, there's literally but the, nothing. But the day, if you publish it the day before, then when the Cartman comes that day, you can go, no, this is how much it's supposed to cost. Is, is that not possible a week prior? Yeah, but I don't know. It's very hard. Moving, moving week's hard. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you made your argument at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem with this is, is that the number of movers is limited. There's not that many Cartman, which allowed them to keep charging crazy high amounts and people would just pay it. Right. The city ordinances for Cartman in 1869 stated they could only charge 60 cents per load for half a mile and one third for each additional mile. They did not have to take the goods to a particular part of the house. So they could just take it and dump it in the front. Fine, we'll take it. If a mover was taken advantage of uh, by a cartman, uh -huh. they could complain to Officer David B. Jones, Inspector of Hacks. Oh, God, we need him. <laughs> in the comedy world? Officer Jones. Uh, he was working the clubs. <laughs> the Inspector of Hacks. Oh, shit, he's coming down tonight. How is everybody? Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I heard Carlos Mencia is performing. I just want to take a look Kyle at Kyle Cease is no longer here, right? He's, he's... We got Kyle Cease. <laughs> All right, well, if you see him, let me know. I'll leave you my card. I'm Inspector of Hex. Officer Jones said he would rule in favor of anyone who went to the trouble to make out a complaint against a cartman. Okay. So, so he's, he's just like... He's down to investigate. Yeah, he's like, anybody who writes a complaint, <laughs> fuck those guys. So... I'm the inspector, and my rule is, fuck those guys. Hey, uh, Inspector of Hacks, what happened to you? Well, back in the day, you see, uh, one of the cartmen, he, uh, my wife and I was moving on moving day, and he, uh, scratched my armoire. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't talk about it much because uh, I'm not good at processing emotions. That's why I'm on the force. You know, the inspector force, but, uh. That's why those bastards can do no right in my eyes. So if you got a complaint against one of these carbon, you let me know. I don't. <laughs> they tried to buff it out, but you can still oh, sort of I see it I underneath don't. the varnish. I gotta be honest, I don't care. I think you're <laughs> overreacting. It's an armoire. It's still totally functional, and we pushed yeah. it up against the wall, but okay. were someone to move it, you would see it you're plain as day. I mean, if you studied it, it's a squinter. You know what I mean? you got to squint to yeah. see it. But so <laughs> you have really incredible emotional issues. <laughs> I think straight up, this has nothing to do with the armoire. Did your dad hug you? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I'm a sloppy crier. How did you get on the force? <laughs> I want to raffle. You're the worst. <laughs> Quote, a well-known hairdresser at the Austin... <laughs> hey, everyone knows me. <laughs> You'll never forget a good hairdresser. <laughs> Hello. Well-known hairdresser at the Astor House named Signore Cristodoro. Hello, I am Cristodoro. You may call me Signore. I'm Polish. <laughs> Had been a tenant for 13 years, starting in 1842 at 13... A uh, hundred per year. Okay. In eighteen, I can't believe the rate, the rents. I know thirteen hundred years. <laughs> it's, it's insane. For eighteen forty-two, are we wrong? Are you wrong? For per year. It, yeah, I, oh, but but still, I mean, it's that's still just nuts. a shitload. Yeah. For eighteen forty-two, uh, in eighteen forty-seven, the lease was renewed for seven years at fifteen hundred. So. That, well, Five years like, later, it goes sign up. sign like an NFL contract as far as your <laughs> yeah, right, I know. Yeah, And if we pick up the option, that'll be another two years, depending. <laughs> but if you get injured and you don't stay in the place for 80% of your contract, we have every right to evict you. So five years, it goes up to $100. Okay. Then in 1854, it was increased to $3,750. Dude, it is going to be 1300 a month in no time. He tried to bargain with the landlord, but the landlord wasn't interested. When this got attention in the media and it was pointed out that uh, Cristodoro had made improvements and decorations, the landlord agreed to meet with him again. Okay. And they discussed it. Why not offer a haircut? Sweeten and, the pot. And he said, quote, Sir, you deserve some mark of my favor. 
I will do for you what I would do for no new tenant. Fifty dollars shall come off. Shall come oh off. Oh my God! The shop is yours uh, for three thousand seven hundred a year. All right. Don't say I didn't do anything for you. I'll put my hand out to be shaken for sure. So I mean, it almost tripled in what twelve years. Yeah. Rents continue to shoot up as the New York Times uh, called it absurd. Businesses were being destroyed. Landlords. Uh, used any opportunity to raise rents. I mean, landlords are all just the monopoly guy, right? Yeah, all yeah. Just oh, like, fuck <laughs> yeah. They still are. Yeah. The ability to raise rents was not due to vacancy rates, but moving day, which created <laughs> which created confusion, distraction, combinations of property owners, and intense speculation in tenement housing. Yeah. So it just it just creates chaos, and then from that they get profit. Right. Like they use it to their advantage. Well, Dave, it's a familiar ingredient list. <laughs> a rich guy would buy a building. And then he immediately raised rents and then resell the building for a profit because he just raised the rent. So uh-huh. a guy would mm-hmm. just buy a building, say the rents increased 500 each and then sell it and go, this is how much more it's worth. That's crazy. Thousands of bil- buildings were changing houses, were changing hands like this. So all these houses, guys are just buying it, saying the rent's now this and then selling it to someone else. Some houses in the Bronx and Brooklyn were being sold several times in one month. Uh, huh? And every guy that bought it would just raise the rent. Oh my God. <laughs> That's, imagine a mid-month rent raise <laughs> twice. Excuse me? No, a, a guy already came by. Hey, uh, no, we're doing it again. So it's... Uh... My building's been sold six times this month. I know, it's crazy. It's the a- market's nuts. Anyway, you owe us, uh, you know, like 1500 uh whatever. Then there were uh, there was a leasing of buildings. A landlord who owned too many buildings to manage would lease a whole building to someone for a fixed annual amount. Th- this is just, I mean, the layers. It's like. Yeah. yeah. Then that guy. So a guy is leasing a building and then he's charging everyone in the building rent and managing it. And then that guy would turn around and raise the rents and cut down on services to make a profit. So you right. lease a building from a landlord, <laughs> right. then you charge everyone higher rents, and then you cut down on services. So well, you're I didn't making, do anything. Is this is this clown? I gotta make a little money out of my uh, building, uh. Uh, not my building, but you know what I mean. You know the building. Of, anyway, here's your toilet bucket. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoy it. It's uh, forty a buck. This especially happened in Jewish communities on the lower. East Side, Williamsburg, and Brownsville, the leasee was hated because the neighborhood thought he was taking advantage of his fellow countrymen. It was chaos. Many a slab in the mid 1800s wrote about what they saw on moving day. New Yorker uh, lawyer George Templeton, strong quote, every house seems to be disgorging itself into the street. All the, all the sidewalks are lumbered with bureaus and bedsteads to the utter destruction of their character as thoroughfares. Anthony uh, Trollope, quote, furniture, rich furniture and ragged furniture, carts, wagons and drays, ropes and canvas and straw, pacers, porters, draymen, yellow, white, uh, uh, black, (laughs) occupy the street front, east to west, north to south. Dave, let me um, maybe present it to our listeners in Mm. a way that kind of makes you see it today. Uh, Imagine if everyone was moving. (laughs) Like, at the same time. Like, imagine if everyone on the same day was moving. Oh, that's interesting. Just think of what that would look it like. It doesn't sound great. <laughs> no. I don't I don't even like going to work when everyone is I'll going to you, work. It's going to ruin your thoroughfares, as they're finding out in this time. In 1869, a landlord put an agent in charge of finding a new tenant. <laughs> imagine if it's like a horror preview. <laughs> everyone moved. <laughs> You'd be like, no! But he was very particular about the kind of person he wanted, so it took the agent all the way up until it was almost moving day to find a new tenant. Ooh. And the landlord was getting worried, so he found a tenant on his own. Okay. But the agent also found a tenant. Oh, no. So both tenants then found out about each other. A duel. <laughs> so one of them paid off the current tenant to leave early and arrive with his cart of furniture right after midnight and loaded all of his furniture in. And then the second new tenant thought he got the jump and he got there at 5 a.m. only to find it was already occupied. And then he sued the other guy. It, and it, it was settled it's, in court. it's how contestants on reality shows call rooms when they get let into the house. <laughs> totally. My stuff's here. Totally. 
So what happens to this person who well, shows up at 5 a.m.? They're just he, like, that's he's over? shit out of luck because the other guy was in there. <laughs> well, it's off to jail. <laughs> Uh, on moving day, the offices of real estate agents began to be encircled by crowds full of crying women who had nowhere to go and whose belongings had been left on the street. They begged for some kind of shelter. <laughs> and these scenes... Why don't you move into your uh, bureaus? You got a dress on, right? Okay, so that's good. Sleep in your drawers. Sleep in your drawer. You got dresses. You got drawers. Come you got all, You can sleep in all kinds a lot of, of things. options. Um, so these crying women, is, uh, so this leads to the construction of more buildings. That's their answer. That's the, the <laughs> I love that. It's great. Yeah. Nothing's changed. New York, New Yorker Philip Hone wrote, he and his downtown neighbors were being offered such high amounts for their houses that no one could resist. So now there's so many people that need houses on moving day. They're building new buildings. So now they're, now they're buying people's houses out and building, build, building. Tenements. Right. And the people, yeah. Okay. Uh, so they in turn... So your how you sell your house, but you can't afford to buy a new house in that area. If you can imagine this, so they went north to live in what used to be orchards and cornfields. So they're moving out into the outer areas. Right. Their old downtown houses are turned into stores or torn down and made into buildings. Okay. So moving day hardened boundaries and segregated the working class from the wealthy. Right. Right. Of people course. are all yeah. moving right. and going into different. Yeah. The 1st of May became a scary day for workers because any kind of setback during the year could make it impossible for them to afford housing. Oh, my God. Those workers... Every year. Every year. Those workers had to... You know Eddie Murphy's old bit, Kill My Landlord? Yeah. Totally. Still <laughs> t- still applicable yeah. then, applicable now. <laughs> uh, so those workers had to move to... So you have some something happen, whatever. Something happens and it costs you money and you're fucked. Yeah, something, ha- anything. So those those workers had to move to find cheaper, worse housing or uh, bail on owed back rent and just run out on rent they owed. Uh, moving day accelerated the quick transformation of New York and blew up a sense of community. People could not remember the house they were born in, but everyone saw moving day as just what was done. Face. We're just the dumbest sheep. <laughs> we are just the dumbest. The founder of the New York Historical Society wrote to his daughter, quote, Tuesday, the 1st of May, hazy, raw. It was very unfavorable for the general moving of our great city. High rents, uncomfortable dwellings, and necess- necessity combined to crowd our streets with carts overloaded with furniture and hand barrows with sofas, chairs, sideboards, Looking glasses and pictures as to render the sidewalks almost impassable. Imagine moving a looking glass. My God. <laughs> <laughs> the practice of all moving on one day is an ancient custom. And when the city was small and inhabitants few in number, but now New York is literally in an uproar for seven for several days before and after the first of May. Yeah. This practice of moving to strangers appears absurd but it comes with the advantage of affording a greater choice of homes in the February quarter. Yeah, but if you have one you like, you're not afforded that. But you but you can find a new great house. No, you like this one. <laughs> it's got all the things. You're happy. <laughs> I, I didn't even I didn't think about that. If it rains. Oh. I mean, if it rains, yeah, it's just I mean, like just, everybody, your stuff's gone. Nobody's got stuff. I mean, it's. A, I assume they pick May 1st because May 1st, that's usually when... It may have changed because there's this thing called climate change, but that's usually when weather's pretty good in New York. That it's the, the one of part, two or three spring the part, weeks that they actually for the most, have. Sure, for the most yeah. part. Um, but sure, it can rain sure, on May first, absolutely. But it's more likely to rain in the summer or the winter. Sure. Yeah. Great. Or what you could do is you could say first nice day of May, but no. <laughs> <laughs> New York Times quote: It would be the easiest matter in the world to break it up if it were desirable, but. As moving is a necessity in this moving age. (laughs) Stop, man. The media is the same. Even the media. Well, look in the Trump era. It is infinitely better that all the moving should take place on one day. And then the hurly burly is over for the year. That's right. Then you don't have to worry about it for 11 months. (laughs) Or worry about it the whole 11 months. Everybody grumbles about moving, yet everybody moves, so we are compelled to believe that moving day is a natural because and beneficial you're being institution. Out. You're being told to leave. And the legitimate outgrowth of our political constitution. My God, dumb, dumb idiots. The media. And so it went on. By 1880, we are 200. 
and 60 years into moving day. The same stories that appeared in the papers 100 years before were written again on moving day. Carts loaded high, kids helping, Cartman being annoying. One author claimed it was because city dwellers craved variety. <laughs> In 1890, the legal rules for Cartman were published in the Times. $2 for a load on a one-horse truck within two miles, 50 cents for each additional mile, 50 cents to load and unload on the first floor, 25 cents for each additional flight of stairs. Of course, they just charged what they wanted anyway. Sure. Either way, by 1900, about a million New Yorkers were switching housing in just 24 hours. What? <laughs> A million. <sighs> Look at you. <laughs> a million. Kids loved moving day. They were usually taken out of school for weeks to help with the move. And New York schools declared moving day a school holiday. <laughs> well, what other option is uh, there, yeah. really? In 1901, the New By York the way, you might have new students tomorrow. <laughs> because <laughs> it's moving who day. knows where they're going? In 1901, the New York Times reported that expensive uptown residences had been changing their lease month to October mm -hmm. to allow people to store their stuff and move after they went on vacation for the summer. So rich people are changing their moving day. These buggers have made first class. Yeah. But the rest of the city is still going at it on May the 1st and things have gotten worse. By the cool. way, what's vacation time? Uh, it's just you go somewhere in the Hamptons. It's so like that time deal. off? Uh, like when people... Oh, right. You're, to, oh, right, you're American. Uh, so uh, <laughs> it's called a holiday. Uh, a lot of Europeans call it that. Celebrate? But it's a, it's a time when you don't work and you get you still get paid, but you get to go, <laughs> no, you no, get to go and, no, and no, take no. a vacation. No, so no, you no, go no. to a... No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Like a, like a You beach. seem like a rational gentleman, yeah, and then yeah. you come over here and you spew nonsense. Well, so mo most, you go on vacation. Most Europeans... Place, Get like a six week vacation during a year, one year, they'll take a six week vacation. But how can you afford to keep living? Well, you get paid for. Your All right, my friend, we've tried to we've tried to sort through this. While you're not working, it's uh -huh. the law that you get. Oh, paid. while you're not working, they're paying you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah because, okay. you, because you've done labor for them. <laughs> yeah, right. You've produced right. for them yeah. over the year. Right. So they owe you. Oh, yeah. Because you are worth. That's something. right. Yes. I'm in the Hawaiian sands getting paid. Of course, my friend. Yes, yes. Hey, want to buy a genie lamp? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so for the not wealthy, moving day has gotten worse. Quote: Occupants of the cheaper apartments and tenements have been notified by their landlord under the terms of the law that permits the landlord to give two hours' notice to vacate on May first once their contract had expired. Okay. So now people are just getting kicked out. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, it's getting worse. Like they think they're going to stay and pay the rent, and the landlord's just kicking them out anyway. Right, it's cool. Municipal courts now had extra afternoon sessions to handle all the landlords who were taking advantage of moving day. Oh my god! So it's now you're weird. adding you're adding going to court in the mix on moving day. It's weird that landlords would take it advantage of this. They're normally good people. They're normally really good. Normally people. good people, they, especially in New York. Yes. Uh, the municipal courts now had an uh, extra day, right? Uh, so women complained their husbands had deserted them and they had no money or anywhere to go. The Bureau of Contagious Diseases received a lot of complaints from people whose landlords were trying to evict them even though people in the family were sick. Oh, God. And landlords complained people were trying to avoid paying rent by claiming someone in the family was sick. I like that. <laughs> I like the twist. In 1903, <laughs> the New York Times said May 1st was no longer moving day because the real estate agents had destroyed the tradition by switching leases to October 1st. Okay. An accident doing something good. Yeah. Then in 1904, the Times wrote there was a low supply of available tenements. Because of the shortage, property owners raised rents 20 to 30% in the Lower East Side, These where bastards. they can afford it most. Bastards. Several hundred in the Jewish quarter hit the streets in protest. Landlords, uh, and they refused to pay their rent. They were mostly garment workers and small businessmen and could not afford the existing rent, already between a quarter to a third of their income. Quote, what is to become of the family whose sole bread earner earns 60 cents a day, whose rent has been increased from 8 dollars to $13 a month? 
Many Lower East Siders felt they, quote, lived and worked for the landlord. At least that's gone. Yeah. Well, because of subprime mortgages. Yeah, that's all over. Now you don't need to worry about and it. And our government takes care of us. They say our you government... should have a, you should, as, as, a, as an American, you should have an, a place to live uh, and then affords you a decent life. They, that's like in the Constitution? I'm sorry. I'm thinking of... Uh, I believe t- Trump spilled Dr. Pepper on the Constitution. That's right. They held protest meetings and went on rent strikes and even picketed the homes of the landlords. They said if they were kicked out, they would spread the word everywhere that no one would be allowed to move in. Okay. They printed up cards in both Yiddish and English warning neighbors, quote, to keep away from the house at whatever, blank street. Sure. The house is on strike because the rent is raised every month and we want to put a stop to it once and for all. Everyone keep away. Okay. So they're, they're going to kick the shit out of people if they try to move it. Okay, I like it. I but, like this. This is yeah, good. And it's also, again, just adding a little more spice to yeah. what's become a really fun um, tradition. I'm, I think a rent strike is a really interesting way to go. Yeah, I mean, what better way to spend May 1st than getting your head beaten in with your own lamp? Imagine what would happen in this country if ever, all renters went on a rent strike. Oh, man. Uh, oh. The dream I'm oh, having. The poor dream landlords. I'm having. By 1905, the Times wrote that moving day was much better. It was no longer mayhem. Quote, modern methods have reduced the operation to a science. A mover in the article said they could now move someone's possessions in one load. But this was also because the subway was now in place. Okay. So many people were able to move to the outer right. boroughs and avoid the nightmare of moving day. Right. So they were, they were stuck in this area because they had no choice. They had to go to work. And the only way we get to work was to walk. So now they now have a subway. Option, now right? they can commute to work. So right. they are less tied down and fucked by a landlord. Right. Uh, this also made rents cheaper. Okay. In early 1918, landlords tried to jack up. Am I the up. only one who got turned on when you said tied down and fucked by a landlord? No, no, I have a bar. Aaron, anything move? Are you, are you uh, a you wreck? Move it? Did it move? Okay. Okay. In early 1918, landlords tried to jack up rates, saying they had suffered through lean years during the war. So World War I was hard Tough on the on poor the landlords. No, well, that's why it's known as the landlord war. <laughs> <laughs> Since wages and prices were going up, they said they should be able to make more money. There were more tenant protests then and strikes in early 1918. Judges and politicians supported the strikers, which shocked and angered the landlords. And me. I don't even know yeah, what's fucking yeah. happening. Well, this is a different time, Dave. <laughs> Obviously, they were yeah, not in the pocket, too. One Bronx owner, quote, Tenants control our property, move in and out of it as they please. Pay rent or withhold it as they please and I treat mean, the landlords I'm well or ignore <laughs> them as they please. Politicians seeking votes are now organizing disgruntled tenants to oppose the rights of landlords. Oh, amazing. I mean, amazing. The rights of the landlords. The first half of that. Uh, gripe is so fantastic. Yeah. You know, they're just coming and going as they please while paying rent. They like, want to be humans! <laughs> yeah, but also it's like, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. You rent. Because, Not forever. No. Because of the times, moving day that year was now October 1st, 1918, and the landlords tried to raise rents again. Thousands of renters prepared to resist. Many didn't have a choice because there were no apartments available and they were being threatened with a hike of $25 to $30 a month, which was up from $12 to $15 the year before. So they're like fucking doubling the rent. It's time, Dave. Yeah. Cartman are still a nightmare. They charged someone as much as a week's wages to move. The (laughs) Times wrote, quote, how much of the furniture would reach its destination as furniture and how much would reach it as firewood? (laughs) Okay. Interesting. In 1919... 96,623 families faced eviction. Judges were now hearing several hundred cases a day, so many that they had to introduce night court. Oh, my God. Often a tenant would be allowed to pay his old rent for another month and then vacate. Because of this, October 1st, 1919 moving day was described as the most congested in New York history. Uh... Oh, there were just 75,000 families in the Bronx and Manhattan changed apartments. A paper quote, this year they count themselves among the lucky if they have any place to go at all. One Bronx Bronx judge wrote, the large amount of eviction proceedings was causing distress, which made tenants easy prey for Bolsheviks and other radicals. Uh Oh no. (laughs) Oh God forbid these poor fucking people getting (laughs) fucked get together and Imagine. Oh, not socialism. They're discussing again. Uh, The next year, on April of 1920, 
New York State adopted emergency rent laws. Now, if a tenant challenged a rent increase, it was reviewed for reasonableness. Cases increased during, ni- during late 1920 and early 1921, and it became overwhelming. A judge in the Bronx said it would take several years to hear all the cases and that the state was not hiring enough additional clerks and it did not have enough courtrooms, but nothing was done. In 1925, the courts were clogged with rent cases. When a tenant contested a rent increase, he was assured of his old rent until the case was heard. Okay. So it can go on for years. Like that. But if the tenant lost, he would have to pay... The increase Back. retroactively. Ah, uh, they get you. Uh, instead, families would move right before it went to trial. Ah, that's smart. Yeah, landlords were encouraged to sue because they were assured the old rent. Uh, so they're assured the old rent, so they can sue people to get them out, um, and then they can include legal costs. So okay. it's literally no loss for a landlord to sue a. A renter. No, there's There's no absolutely nothing against. Yeah. Um, So it's a total shit show. Cases are piling on. Judges at some point decided to come up with their own solution. So the judges all got together and they're like, let's fucking fix this shit because the state is not. Okay. They stopped the landlords from bringing suits from far away, which they were doing. So they would. So a person lives in Greenwich Village Uh and they would file the suit out in Queens. Okay. Because it's hard for the tenant to travel. The oh, tenant, tenant has to okay. work, right? Right. So the tenant now has to go to no court show, and or travel. Like annoy them, yeah. Okay. Uh, so they made they made them charge wherever the building was. They made them okay. file the suit. The in proximity is now on the side of the tenant. And the judges agreed that a reasonable rent would give the landlord an eight percent profit of the market value of his property. Okay. So that's what. So now they're like, you can't double it or right. whatever. Go crazy. Still, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, guy. but I mean, compared, people are probably like, well, finally, some reasonable solutions. And then World War II came. Men who worked in the moving industry were drafted to fight in the war. The ones who remained in the U.S. went to work in the defense industry, making weapons, making cars. Uh The moving industry had no labor. Finally, New York started a rent control program in 1943, and that's when moving day ended. In 1943. Moving day did not end. In 1943. People are getting fucked relentlessly by landlords. It does not end until there's no one left to move yeah. stuff. Right. That's when it ends. There, yeah. Up until then, they're like, yeah, just go ahead and fuck people. Right. That is three. It took a world war. 320 years oh of moving God. day. Moving day. Of just fucking people. Of and just an annual them. continuing nightmare. Nightmare. Oh, my God. And that, my friend, is the free market, and we love it. Oh, no. You're listening to the Libertarian podcast. The Libertarian? Libertarian. Sorry. Libertarian. Better. Wait. Why? Hmm? I like to say why. It's interesting. That just. It uh, feels like a dig. It is. Oh. So at the end of World War II, GI's vets flooded the city and the population of New York exploded again. How's moving day been going? Oh, you're not going to believe it, George. It's gone. We stopped. The headline in 1945 was, quote, housing shortage erases moving day. Moving hey, you day. know, uh, we just got back from war. <laughs> yeah, we're covering real estate now. It's front page stuff. Moving day was done. Uh, the new housing shortage forced the c- city's inhabitants to stay where they lived. And with rent control, they could. Moving day eventually faded from the memories of all New Yorkers. Man. It's like traffic laws, but buildings. It's just like, I mean, just, you just like, like no one has ever given a shit about people. In this no, it is. You have to be like a hockey goalie. Like with the amount of blocking of like fucking that they're going to try to do of you. It's just coming at you all the time. Yeah. It's just all, anytime you cut off one head, there's another one pops up. You cannot, there's just, you can't, <laughs> they're just, greed is the strongest evil in the world today. So, and we'll, we're, we're going to start cutting it off after and just putting up the extra stuff we talk about on Patreon. Oh, right. Um, dollop after dark. We're dollop calling. after dark. Um, we're back here today. We're in this totally fucked rent place. 
and something has to break. Yeah. Right? Yes. Like people are paying. I was just talking to someone. Oh, so this guy, we know this guy. Uh, someone just told me a story. Uh, I know I know a couple of people like this. I knew people like this in New York. Broke, bre- they have a, bre- they're living together. They break up and neither one can move out. Oh, right. Yeah. So they're living together. Yeah. And they can't move. Yeah. And you're in a one bedroom apartment with someone you used to be in a relationship with. Yeah. Dude, and the I, rents have you stuck there. Man, I, in my family, have had a couple situations where the, yeah, people are no longer compatible and they have no choice because they of the circumstance to to, but to stay and try to figure out the weirdest. So now you're, so now you're in the situation where you're, stressed and living in a nightmare and just going to your job and your whole fucking life is hell. That's pretty cool. When I lived in New York, um, I moved. But in a way, Dave, they're making it so that you never want to go home, which is kind of the goal. (laughs) When I lived in New York, I lived in this building for uh, two years on the Upper West Side and it was cheap. It was like a little studio. And then I was walking out of the building one day and this guy who lived there, he's coming down the elevator and he goes, he goes, you know, this is rent control, right? And I go, yeah. He goes, find out what your rent is. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, there's a place downtown where they list how much your rent should be, oh, and wow. then how much you're paying, and then and then how much you're paying. And I go, what? He go, he was charging me 150 dollars more a month. And so I went down to this fucking place and I look up the listing, and he's literally charging me 200 more dollars a month than he's legally allowed to. And just fudging the books and then showing that to the city and being like, yeah, no, I only took this amount. And so I go to him and I go, dude, I've been living here for fucking two years. You have a rent controlled building, which now explains why you fucking treat us all like shit and don't take care of it. Because he wants all he was trying to get all the everyone to leave. So he's treating everyone like shit and charging us uh, more. Yeah. And I, and I call him on it, and he just fucking laughs. Oh, man. And goes, ah, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it back to you. Dude. He just fucking laughed. It was like, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, I'll well, give it all back like, to you. it's like, ah, you put in the work. <laughs> you did your homework. I'm going to reward you. Don't tell the others. So this, this episode just makes me think of climate change. Totally. Right? Totally. The, the parallels are uh, extraordinary because... It isn't, I mean, as we know, it's like, that's what we talk about. Like, the way to move the, uh, f- like, the pending calamity to move that feeling up when it's you're not feeling it. It's like, in high school, a friend of mine's dad was a fucking lifetime smoker, right? He goes to the doctor one day. Doctor says he has cancer. He never smoked another cigarette. Now, if he had, 10 years prior taken the mentality that the doctor put in his head when he told yeah. him you have cancer he would have probably lived 20 years longer but he couldn't get his head around the idea that he couldn't smoke couldn't imagine his life without cigarettes so he kept smoking until it was too late then he stopped and died <laughs> yeah because then he had cancer and it was too late yes which is what's happening now yes and it's like this is such a great example of like you just because it's the way it is, you just fucking stay in it. it it's it's like a yeah, it's it's nor I mean it's normalcy. Normalcy is just what we cling to. I mean, it, you know, it's every time literally every time I go buy a new a thing of detergent, I'm like this has got to stop. Yeah. This is like crazy. Yeah. But you like the amount cuz I'm super I've become super conscious of how much shit I'm using. The plastic stuff, the, plastic, the stuff that I am now so Yeah, you're try so you try to avoid plastic. Yeah. And then you realize how much, like if you focus on plastic oh, yeah. and you start to realize how much fucking plastic you use yeah. and how hard it is to not use it. I, I look forward to a world where the term non-plastic is like uh, non-smoker, vegan, like whatever. Yeah. It's just one of the non-groups. It's when you call a restaurant and you want takeout and you say, I'm non-plastic. They go, yeah, we cater to non-plastic. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the episode of Mad Men when they have a picnic and then they drive away and they leave the picnic, the trash just mm-hmm. sitting on the, that's what we're doing with the world. Yeah. 
Um, and then there's just little shit. Like I, I tweeted something and someone was like, have you ever tried uh, shampoo bars? Do you know what shampoo bars are? Mm-hmm. It's just a fucking bar that's like a soap bar, mm. but you just rub it on your head. Right. So now you're not buying shampoo right. in a plastic bottle. Right. So I immediately, there was a store near me that sells them. I went down and bought them. They're fucking great. It's better than shampoo. There, there are ways to do it. I, I, like, I guess we're rambling on so people can stop. But have you seen a trigger? Um, tr- I think, it, what is it? Trigger Warning or Triggered, the Killer Mike show on Netflix? Have you seen it? Oh, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, there is, it's interesting. It's, it's different than what you would probably expect. But there's the, I think it's the first one where he's like, he's only going to, for like three days or something, only going to live on uh, products that are made by and profit benefits the black community. Oh, fuck. And so he's now like, like he can't smoke weed. Like, again, it's heightened. <laughs> oh, man. It's not like, it's like a heightened thing, but it definitely displays the point of like, he starts having, you know, when you source your stuff, that's why I love going to the farmer's markets. It's like, when you source your stuff, and you actually start to know people who are like, like yeah. the more that you can take money away, that's really what the goal is. That's and it's right. just every step you can take towards that is better. The more that you can take the money away from the big places, the more that you can not get, and I'm not, people have different situations, people can afford different things, but yeah. the more, the less that you're giving your money to Walmart and the more that you're giving your money to a mom and pop or whatever it is, the, the more that you can just like focus money on places that actually have uh, characteristics that you identify with as people or places or, or companies that are going to stop just not giving a fuck. Yeah. The more that you can do that, the more these big companies that don't want you to give a fuck will start to give a fuck when you're diverting your attention elsewhere. But at the end of the day, this episode just makes me think that there has to be a general strike. There has to be a rent strike. There has to be a everybody just shuts it down because there, it's, totally. it's we, yeah. we are so off the path of how the fuck this can work. And you think about like the, the honestly, the fear that must go through them when they feel what happened with the LaGuardia. airline workers yeah. the other day. Like, just... The, and, like, and the teachers' union. And the teacher, right. The, it's happening and more and more, and they the got to be The West Virginia... In, yes. uh, I think it was West Virginia teachers. Like Virginia teachers, Oklahoma teachers, uh, the, LA teachers, now Denver teachers are going on strike. So the more that they see that... The more scared they get. Yeah, because they're like... And they have to be scared. We have to scare them. Dude, it's like when the Velociraptor opens a door in Jurassic Park. <laughs> it's time for... <laughs> Clever girl. Yeah, and these people in New York let it go on for 300 years, yeah. and they should have shut it down at some point way be- fucking before that and just said, no. The what the fuck is, are you going to do? You can build new buildings, and you can change rent. There's not enough lumber for a new planet. We will live on bark. Bark? The bark houses. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably a good time to tell people to go uh, follow... Planet Change 10. Yeah, follow Planet Change 10. That's our uh, environmental group that we've started. Oh, and Aaron from All Things Comedy has promised us that we're going to start to get little clips when we come down here to film that we can post on Instagram. Little, right, Aaron? What are we doing? Hmm? <laughs> Remember the stuff we were talking about? He doesn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, we talked about it. Little clips. Little cl- teaser clips from the show. Okay. Well, that's good. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.